This video is sponsored by the Shortbox app. It's the easiest and safest way to buy and sell graded comic books online. There's a link in the description below to download the app for Apple and Android users. If you don't want to mess around with trading and you want to buy right now, click that link and download the app today. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex, a comic hoarder. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video. This is a video about how I trade my comic books out of my collection for Holy Grails. And I wanna walk you through that process to hopefully prepare you about trading your comic books. In this climate, in this environment, money is tight. I mean, I don't wanna spend thousands of dollars to buy the books that I want, so I use other methods such as trading. And these are the ways that I do it. So I've traded for X-Men number ones, I've traded for Daredevil number ones, Fantastic Four number 48s. I've also traded for these two books behind me, Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man in a 2.0. I traded for this All-Star Comics number eight in a 4.0, the first appearance of Wonder Woman from the Golden Age from 1941. I completely 100% traded and didn't spend a dime out of my pocket except for shipping and insurance to trade for these books. They were 100% trade. Now, of course, I've got the acquisition cost of my books way Way back in the day so maybe one of the books that I traded for this all-star comics number eight was a thousand dollar book that I paid a thousand dollars for that accumulated and and rose in value to over ten thousand dollars either way I was able to achieve these books and other books without having to spend a lot of money out of my pocket at that time so this is my process on how to do that the first thing you're gonna want to do is identify three to five books that you're willing to trade for so these are the books that are on your list of books that you must have. These are your holy grails, or these are books at least that you really, really want. Ways to do this, start searching Instagram, Hip Comic, start searching eBay, Shortbox, Facebook, etc. for the books that you really want. Also search for sellers and dealers that have these type of books. Start networking with known dealers, asking them if they have one, or if they know of people, other dealers who have them, or other sellers who have these books. And then research the value. So if you want a 4.0 of a certain book, how much does that 4.0 go for? Does it go for $2,000? Does it go for $2,500? Does it go for $3,500? Figure out what that book goes for so that you have an idea of what in your collection you could potentially offer for trade for that book. Also, you'll want to realize, are you after a raw book or are you after a graded book? I will tell you graded books are so much easier to deal with because it takes the guessing game out of it. I could say one book is a 9.8, and a dealer or a grading company could look at that and say, this is an 8.0. You've got really generous eyes for your own books. So it takes the guessing game out when you're dealing with raw books versus graded books. Then go to your collection and start pulling out keys. Start pulling out books that are attractive to other dealers and other sellers that you're willing to trade. I usually get a, a pile of 10 to 20 books that I can work with so that when a dealer says, I'm looking for these certain books, I can pull out of these piles of books that I'm ready and willing to get rid of for that specific trade. Also, another thing you wanna do when you're pulling out your books, are these books replaceable? I care about these books, I obviously bought them for a reason, but are they replaceable? Can I buy this $100 book later? Is there a possibility that I could buy this $500 book at a later date? I really wanna go for my grail, I think now is the time to go for it. So you have to ask yourself, are these books replaceable? Another thing that I always ask, so if you reverse the deal, so if you look at your pile of 10 to 20 books, and then you look at that one book, would I reverse this deal if I had the single book? And if the answer is no, then it's definitely something you wanna to try to go for. Obviously the dealer might say no too because they've got that single book, but if you had this Amazing Fantasy 15, would you trade it for a bunch of Fantastic Four keys like Fantastic Four 48, 49, et cetera? Would you do that? For me, I want this single Holy Grail. I want this Amazing Fantasy 15 over the first appearance of Silver Surfer. I go for what's the bigger yes. And if the bigger yes is that individual book that you're trying to go for, then that's the right decision. You can replace these books, but you probably wouldn't want to replace this one book, okay? So it's just a hypothetical. Here's another bit of advice. When you're dealing with dealers or comic book sellers, if you're trying to go for a Silver Age book, you probably don't wanna bring a whole bunch of modern variants to the table, unless that dealer is known for dealing in modern variants. If you're dealing with a strictly golden age dealer trying to get this all-star comics number eight, you don't wanna bring a whole bunch of bronze or copper age books to the table because he has no interest in them. Even though he can sell them, you could sell them too. He wants golden age books. So bring to the deal 
similar books to what you're trying to get. It's good advice because I've had several deals where I try to bring Silver Age books to a Golden Age dealer. And even though they're so close, you know, 15, 20 years separate the two, that Golden Age dealer doesn't have any use for those Marvel keys. Once again, the best way to entice a dealer or a comic book seller on Instagram, eBay, what have you, is to bring graded books to the table. It completely takes out the guessing game. And there's also an associated value with graded books. For raw books, there's the grading fees. When a book is a 9.8 versus a 9.6, there's a huge discrepancy in the prices. There could be a thousand dollar price difference between a 9.8 and a 9.6. So you definitely wanna to bring to the table your best opportunity to get those books, which would be graded books. Now we're gonna talk about when you have your book selected, you want to place a value on your books because that's the first thing a dealer is going to ask. What do you value your books at? If the dealer's interested in trading, they're gonna say, what do you value your books at? They'll probably cross check you, but if you make them do the work, they're probably not gonna be interested. Time is money, they don't wanna sit there and value your five to 10 books. So I've got a system for that, but before we do that, I wanna talk about also, the amount of books. If you're trying to trade for one specific book or one grail or one major blue chip key, it's harder for a dealer or less enticing if you bring like a stack of 20 books. The reason why we said 20 books at the beginning is just these are the books that you're willing to trade out of your collection. You probably most likely want to trade about three to five books in in that value range for that one book. That's more enticing than going to a dealer and trying to trade 20 books because instead of selling one book, now that dealer has to sell 20 books to make the same amount of money. So you wanna to try to bring like three to five books worth of value, even less, the less is better, but when you're working to try to get one of those bigger books, sometimes you have to bring several books to the table. I would recommend, you know, three to five probably not much more than that. We're gonna talk about pricing your books and, and why you wanna price your books and how to price your books when we do our hypothetical. So I brought some books with me right now and we're gonna do a hypothetical trade situation. So hypothetically, I really, really want an Action Comics 252. This is the first appearance of Supergirl. This has always been a dream of mine to own this book. I never thought it would be attainable but now I've got some trade bait that I think might do the trick. So a dealer posts this on Instagram. I wanna go after it. How do I get there? First of all, the dealer's asking fair market value for this book, which is $2,600. So he wants $2,600 for this copy, this 4.0 copy of Action Comics 252, the first appearance of Supergirl. So I need to come up with a trade of $2,600 or more. Now, of course, there are several ways to get a book. You can pay cash. Cash is king. Everybody wants cash. It's the easiest way to buy comic books. If you want to just buy a comic book, download the Shortbox app and go buy it right now. Number two is trade plus cash. A lot of dealers saying, are you got can you throw in any cash on this deal? I've I've recently told dealers, I, I don't have any money to spend right now. I just don't want to spend any cash. This is an all or nothing trade deal. And most of the times they're like, okay, let's see if we can work out a deal. But always be respectful. Be appreciative of the fact that they're even listening to and entertaining the fact that you want to do an all trade offer. I mean to find a dealer is like a needle in a haystack. It's more rare to find a dealer that will do a full-blown trade than dealers that just want cash or cash plus trade. So be very appreciative of their time. Never ever be rude. And if it doesn't work out, hey, part as friends. Don't be frustrated by how they value your books. If they wanna value your thousand dollar book at $600, Hey, we don't agree. We're not eye to eye. Thank you so much for your time. I, I appreciate you taking a look at these things. It doesn't look like it's going to work out. Best of luck selling your book. So be, be grateful, be appreciative. It never helps to be rude, obviously, in a trade offer where they've got the upper hand. I've got a pile of four books here that I'm going to start making my trade offer for that one book. The first book that I pulled up is a great book. This is an eye-catching book. It's appealing to dealers. I know that it is. So I want to make a huge impact. I'm going to offer up this Detective Comics 359. This is a very appealing book. So I've got this book in my collection. It's 5.5, first appearance of Batgirl. I, I really want that Supergirl. It's been the dream book of mine. So I'm going to start valuing this book for myself so I can come with you know all the information needed. 5.5 FMV, so fair market value for this book is $1,250. I also look at the last three sales 
and you can look on eBay, you can look on GoCollect, you can look on GPA, but I wanna look at the last three sales to kind of get an idea of what this book has been selling for. And if the last sale is 20, you know, 2017, you may have to go to like other pricing sources, like look at the grade above it, look at the grade below it, kind of average out those prices to find out what a 5.5 is selling for because the last sale for a 5.5 was in 2017, hypothetically. So the last three sales for a first appearance of Batgirl and a 5.5 were 1400, 1200, and then another 1400. So the average is $1,333. My cost in this book, I always want to know my acquisition cost. My cost in this book was probably about $500 several years ago. So I have $500 into this book. I'm keeping a mental note of how much I have into my books as well. So I'm going to mark this book down at anywhere of a value of $1,250 to $1,333. So I know I'm at about $1,200 to $1,300. I know I've got a little bit of ways to go. Next book up I pull out is this Flash 139. Cool book. It also garners a lot of attention, a lot of respect in comic book collecting. This is a 6.0 white pages. The fair market value for a Flash 139 6.0 is $950. The last three sales were $997, $900, and $1,100 in January of 2022. So these were all sales within the first quarter of the year. So the average price of this book is $999 or $166 a point. So I took the $999, divided it by six to find out price per point. So for a 7.0, if you did price per point, it would be $166 times seven to get an idea for the 70 price. So it'd be about $1,166 for a 7.0. It's just to give you an idea if there's no recent sales for a 7.0. So now we're about up to $2,200 for this trade offer. I know that I need 400 more dollars to make this baby work, or at least to come to the table with a decent, respectable offer. I had $600 into that book. So right now, my acquisition cost is about $1,100, but my trade value is about $2,200. $1,100 acquisition, $2,200 trade, I'm still in the green. Next book I pull out is this Captain Adam Number 83, this is the original one from Charlton Comics, not the reprint, not the modern comics reprint. This is the first appearance of Blue Beetle. As you can see, I paid $250 for this book. This one is valued fair market value at $400. So based on fair market value, we are there. But based on recent sales, last three sales for this book were 315, 240, and 154, we are really not there. So if we do maybe like a $300 value on this book, we're about $100 shy. So I need to find $100 and I paid $250 for this. So we're still completely in the green now. We're at about $1,450 for my total acquisition cost. All right, so the last ditch effort to make this deal work, I'm at four books now. So you remember there's like three to five books to make it a respectable trade. Blue Beetle number one, once again from Charlton Comics. This is the first appearance of the question and the first Blue Beetle in his title, Ted Cord in his own title. This is a 4.0, so 4.0 fair market value, $200. So we're over the threshold with this book. The last three sales are $181. $114 and $125. The average is $140. So we have enough to make our trade offer. You go to the dealer with nice pictures. You go to the dealer with these figures, how you valued them, what you saw. You, you know, The more details you can provide, the better ammunition, the less likely that the dealer will doubt your figures or really have a hard time believing that I value this book at $500. Well, the last three sales were $181, $114, and $125. So we're coming to the table with $2,600 or more. So you go to the table and the dealer can do one of two things. He can say, well, uh, we're not quite there. Do you have anything else you can throw in? Sometimes you can say, no, man, that's it. I'm pretty much maxed out at this point. I know the values of these are probably a little bit more than $2,600. At this point, I don't really have anything else of this caliber to throw in. Um, but if it's something that you really, really want, no, you know, my acquisition cost of these books is probably at about that $1,600. So I'm talking $1,600 for a $2,600 book. That's a $1,000 gain as far as what we're getting here. So we're going from $1,600 
in acquisition cost to a $2,600 book? Is it worth me going up another $100, finding another $100 book to add to this just to seal the deal? So if that's the case, if the dealer really is on the fence, hey, I really like those books. It's just the value's not quite there. Okay, I've got one more book. New Gods, number one, 6.5. This is about, you know, 100 to $200 book. I'll throw this one in on top of it. Puts, puts my value at about $2,800. Would you do the deal? I'll cover my shipping. You cover your shipping. We'll ship out tomorrow. So anyways, that is how I do it, you guys. Let me know in the description below. This has worked several times, but we're talking about big books. Like I traded X-Men number one, Fantastic Four number one, Hulk 181, Giant Size X-Men number one for All-Star Comics number eight, first appearance of Wonder Woman. So I bundled several, several gigantic humongous blue chip keys you can do this on all levels you can go mega blue chip keys or you can go hundred dollar books i mean if this is your grail if if two hundred dollar grail you know find find a couple fifty dollar books find two one hundred dollar books and try to make this work really do hope you guys appreciate this if you're brand new to the channel hit that subscription button hit that bell to be notified when there's future videos hit that thumbs up comment down below if you've made any trade deals or if you have any questions about this you want me to elaborate any further on any details but with that being said you guys best of luck with your trade deals make it happen if you ever want to trade with me if you've got some awesome books that you want to trade, if you've got one book and you want me to send you 10 books, let me know. I would definitely be interested in working out some kind of deal. But with that being said, you guys, hope you're well, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. See you. Bye.